Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Pisces. If Pisces is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Pisces. And we have the Fool card from Tarot of the Abyss deck. Okay, and let's take a look and see what these tea leaves have to say. Let's say hello to TT. Hi, TT. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. And it's free to subscribe. All right. So the first thing I want to look at here is we have two people. Okay. Uh, it looks like masculine, feminine. And, uh, in the middle, it looks like almost kind of a, like a, a, uh, apparition, <laughs> an apparition. And you can see the face right here, almost kind of a, a witch's hat or something, um, along those lines and maybe kind of the body here. It looks like it's kind of flowing through the air. Um, so I feel like we have these two, um, maybe counterparts, <laughs> uh, maybe partners, maybe magical, um, magical partners or, or spouses, celestial spouses, uh, some kind of, can you come over here? Come here. Come on, mama. No, 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 no. Oh my goodness. You get bigger every time you little silly. All right. So I do feel like, uh, yeah, coming together and working on a magical, um, endeavor of some kind. Maybe you are doing ritual ceremony. Um, maybe you have some kind of, uh, entity in the home. You're trying to get that thing out of there. <laughs> You're trying to figure out what you can do. You, you and your spouse, um, tired of the paranormal activity in the home. Um, you know, something, something along these lines. So I do feel like there is this, you know, kind of, uh, it feels like not a poltergeist. I don't feel like it, it's an extension of your, um, consciousness or, um, or psyche, but I do feel like this is kind of a, a separate entity. This is something that has its own will. Okay. And I feel like it is, it almost feels kind of cursed in some way. Um, but I also think that you know what you're doing, right? So I feel like you are moving off of intuition, but you also have some kind of education in um, kind of, you know, shielding yourself, binding off um, these kinds of energies. I always like to... I always like to recommend um, Dion Fortune's Psychic Self-Defense book. That's one of the best ones um, for situations like this. Maybe you have been having dreams where there's an entity kind of um, coming around and, and um, it feels, you know, kind of um, malevolent or, um, or, you know, it's really kind of... <laughs> coming towards you. You know, often we have these dreams, I think, where we can feel things. We know that they're there. Um, they feel like they're kind of looming about. There's an oppressive nature to it, but we don't necessarily see them. Um, they're not very forthcoming. And uh, and then, you know, that can cross over into our waking life where we begin to um, feel these kinds of things. For me, I um, have certain 
entities or intelligences that are profound in my dream world, but I only really can tell that they're going to be coming around because I can smell them. Um, before we have any kind of interaction and I there are certain there are just certain smells that they start to come up and um, just you know I'll be out in the world doing things and all of a sudden I'm like okay <laughs> I know we're about to have a series of dreams here and maybe some visitations um, because I can just I you know the the it's almost like smelling somebody's perfume that, uh, you know, it's like tied to your, the, your grandmother, the memory of your grandmother. You smell it and immediately you're transported to um, being with her in her home and her things smelled like this and and her jacket smelled like this and, and um, that feeling of, you know, love and, and kinship and all that. Well, it's kind of like that. Right, but these are these are um, non-physical beings. So, uh, yeah, I feel like there's some kind of maybe supernatural um, thing going on, and I, you know, I feel like it's verified in that, you know, you have somebody else in your life who is experiencing the same um, phenomena. So you have a team here that could be good, that could be bad, um, because. When we have, when we're experiencing some something with somebody else, um, there's there can be um, kind of a you know a a phenomena of gassing each other up, kind of getting each other um, riled up about uh, oh yeah that sound that was that too or um, you know kind of you're looking for. Right, and these might be just non-related occurrences, um, but we get the we really kind of go into that place together, and it's harder to kind of maybe separate what is what. Um, but I do, you do, you have this energy, and I feel like it's amplified because of the eclipse. And now, when this reading is coming out. The eclipse will be happening on Tuesday, where I'm at anyways, Tuesday. And um, and so it is. It feels like it's amplified. This is a gateway of sorts. And, um, you know, this might be a good time to set forth those intentions to kind of clear this energy out of your life, to detach this thing. And that might be the other thing, is that this is a roving spirit. Um Although I feel like it may be more specific than, than that because of the hat. And so I almost kind of feel like this is something working against you or at least um, kind of, oh, what's how should I say, kind of uh, something that has been released into your life, right? By somebody, maybe you know them, maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, but it, it does feel like this is an energy directed into, um, into your world. So, uh, be mindful, you know, don't be, don't be afraid though. Um, I, I don't think that this is anything beyond kind of a, um, you know, I don't know, maybe a, <laughs> a profane attempt, right? Uh, so Anyways, uh, that's interesting. I love when I see some kind of high strangeness or entity that's kind of hanging out. Um, and they might just be curious. You know, that's always a possibility. So we have, it looks like a pig on the top there. Um, we have a person holding a child right here in the middle. So I wonder if you... Um, grew up in a place where maybe there was farming industry or maybe you had a maybe you had a pig or you lived in I don't know maybe maybe um you know and I don't mean to offend anybody but I mean people have them maybe your family had pig roasts or or something like this um you know I don't know but it seems like a central uh a central animal to the situation. We also have another pig down here and you can see the ears, um, you know, right there. So, um, it, and it does speak to me as being part of the childhood. 
Uh, so maybe you encountered a pig in some way, but um, I feel like there's a fondness there, definitely. And I almost kind of see as we turn it like this, it looks like a person. You can see the head, the body, the arm kind of, here's the lower torso, the leg, kind of riding on the pig there. If you can kind of imagine that being a person riding a pig or trying to get on top of it there. So it does, it does speak to me like a pig farmer of some kind. Um, maybe in your family somewhere, um, there was this, you know, maybe it was farming. Um, one side of my family, they, um, they were, uh, kind of seasonal workers. Um, and farmed and farmed and, you know, it's funny because, um, I, I had been told about it when I was a kid, um, but I would have dreams about orchards and, um, and I just, I have such a love for like the idea of a grow, a sacred grove, an orchard, um, this kind of thing. And come to find out my family had orchards and, um, and then, you know, maybe I kind of took that into myself as a child, you know, hearing stories and stuff. And then it started to manifest in my dreams later on. Um, but it felt pretty profound to me. It almost felt kind of like a genetic memory, like a shared memory. And, um, because it felt so close and so real and so vibrant. And so it's always interesting when we have these things come up and it's like, where does this come from? Like maybe your life is so different from this, you know, th these generations of family, uh, that it's kind of unrecognizable. Um, but interesting to maybe go back and look, are there kind of pig, um, something to do with pigs or pig adjacent, um, you know, kind of thing going on with the fam. Now we have a house and it looks like we have, um, almost kind of like a, maybe a wind turbine or something right here. So I really, I wonder if you are somebody who, uh, lives rule or I just, maybe this is more to do with the family again. Um, but, or maybe you yearn to kind of live out, out in the middle of nowhere in the farming, in the farmlands. Uh, I do. <laughs> I do. I love it. Um, so, uh, yeah, it just, it keeps coming up here. Um, how interesting. So we also have an owl in the middle. So we have the watcher. The watcher, the watcher, and we have a person standing here and you can see the face, right? And I should use my little stick, uh, the face and the nose and kind of wrapped up, bundled up. Uh, we have another person over here and it looks like they're kind of waiting for this person. Um, and I do, I feel this energy of, um, kind of being watched over. Uh, I almost feel like I can almost imagine kind of walking down the road to your friend's house or, um, going, you know, going along the way to, um, go see like your mom or dad or somebody, um, and, and being able to, maybe you live in the small community, like we had talked about, I don't know, but, um, there's a sense of, you know, being, um, kind of protected in your journeys and having those blessings, you know, and this is something we don't always think about, right? I'm always so tickled when, um, I hear somebody, you know, uh, praying for safe travel, praying, um, you know, I hope that, you know, my, my husband, my kids make it home safely today, you know, today, like any other day. Um, because it is, it is kind of a blessing that we, um, often forget to say thanks for, and that is that we leave our domain. We go out into the wilds <laughs> and we, um, you know, make our movements across sometimes lots of land and, um, you know, maybe you're in a very populated area, all kinds of variables going on. 
and um, you find your way home safely at the end of the day. And uh, that is a blessing. I mean, it just absolutely is. So, uh, yes, I do. I feel like you. there's a real protection here. And I wonder if you have... Um, something akin to like a Mercury statue, statue or Hermes statue or maybe a talisman or it could be a placement in your chart. Um, but, you know, Mercury is uh, not only the god of messages and uh, the messenger of God, but also travels. And this is why there would be, they were called Hermas. And these are kind of a bust of... Um, a bust and often like a phallic, <laughs> a very prominent, prominent phallic um, piece. And they would be set at the crossroads. So, and it's interesting too, because even when there would be invading armies, um, you know, they would lay waste to most things, structures and, and so on, but they would leave the Hermas because they were markers of the road, but they were also, um, you know, very superstitious that these, uh, if these were to be taken down or or destroyed, um, you, it would the gods would look poorly upon, um, you know, even people of different religious, uh, you know, affiliations. So, uh, you know, and if you don't have one, maybe a good a good time to um, maybe have some kind of Hermes icon or. Um, a blessing uh there there's a book i want i think that there is one for mercury um this uh guy who became infamous because he wrote uh morals and dogma for the masons but his name is albert pike and um he also wrote a collection of hymns to the gods and goddesses and a beautiful beautiful book um, and worth looking at, you know, I know that there's like a lot of conspiracy stuff around this Albert Pike, um, but his book on, or his book of hymns are just gorgeous. So, um, maybe something to look at as well, some kind of blessing. Um, I'm sure that there are old ancient ones as well that you can find. Um, so let's see. Take a look what we have here. It's my last reading of the night. Ooh, and I just just spilled it. What is that? I always this always makes me think there's a piece of hair because they have long black hair. I'm always like, is my hair on there? <laughs> no, it's not my hair. That's part of the pattern. All right, all right. What do we have, Lenore? There's anxiety. We have some anxiety, but I feel like it's excitement. This is an exciting anxiousness. We also have an illuminating candle. Okay, so spiritual downloads um, coming your way, which makes sense. You have kind of a lot of stuff going on that is going to take some kind of deeper, um, some deeper works. We have something about, we have a, a person here. And it almost kind of makes me think of something like a dog bed or um, I almost wonder like taking in the, the companion of a loved one who is transitioning or maybe they're very ill or they are not able to care for their animal anymore. And I feel like you're maybe the one that, that is willing to do that. Um, and I feel like this is, it's coming through that this is something that is most blessed. Um, this is a perfect example of your loving and giving nature. Um, but also I feel like this, this is going to be a great blessing for you. If, it, if it's already happened, you know, this is an animal that 
will love you forever and you will love them forever. And it is very much tied to this person um, in your family or friends group, community, uh, that needed the assistance. And, um, you know, the, here's the big thing is that um, so often we have these amazing companion animals, but when you get ill or, um, you know, you have financial woes, maybe you have um, fears of being unhoused or, you know, whatever it is. And um, one of the first things that you will worry about is what's going to happen to my babies here? You know, what am, what's going to happen to the cats? What's going to happen to the dog? Um, I don't, I'm scared you know, what's, what will be for them. And so when somebody is beloved enough to come in and say, Hey, I will take care of that. Please don't worry about it. I mean, that's like one of the ultimate gifts that you can give. Um, so I do feel like this is a, um, recognition of, um, thanks for this. Okay, and maybe it is that this person has transitioned already. It might be that they have not, but they are um, altered enough because of illness or age or, or whatever it is um, that they can't fully express to you um, their feelings, right? The communication has um, gotten tough, okay? So... Uh, this is something I think that, uh, you know, you might, you might think this is going to be a lot, this is a lot to ask or whatever. Um, but it ends up being something that in a lot of ways will help you through your own process. And, uh, you know, I myself, I love Obviously, I love animals. I'm always, <laughs> it's like the thing I think about the most besides my family is just looking at animals, watching animals, um, being with the cats and and all of that kind of thing. And, um, but I'm also like, you know, I don't want any more animals because it's too much to take care of and this and that. But Who's the first one to be like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take your baby. Um, you know, so I get it. I understand, you know, the resistance to it. But then, you know, it happens and it's like you found you found another love of your life. You know, um, I always love those uh, like little TikToks or YouTube compilations or, um, you know, memes and stuff about uh, like my dad said he never wanted a cat. And then it's like the dad like has the cat, like all, you know, bound, like, uh, bundled up and he's carrying it around and feed, hand feeding it. And so, you know, it's like his best friend ever. Um, and I feel like that's the vibe, like that hap that's so real. Like <laughs> you just end up falling in love. And I say this as I'm petting TT down there. Huh? You ready for bed? Yeah, I think you are. Me too. All right. So, uh, let's, oh, we have to do our card. We have to do the Indigo Sage Affirmation Cards. And this is the air element. I'm going to go ahead. We'll flip through. And we'll stop where it feels right. Okay. Let's get this close here. And it says... Appreciation illuminates, embrace an absolute love of life without exception. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I don't know how to do that, but yes. <laughs> it sounds wonderful. All right, Pisces, I want to tell you I love you because I do, and I think you know that. Uh, and so, um, I also want to tell you, thank you for allowing me to do these readings for you. It's always such an honor. Um, and if you would be so kind as to like the video, it helps the channel a lot. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It's free to subscribe. Um, if you'd like to leave a comment, please do. I would love to hear from you. Um, I love doing these bonus readings because they're a little more like loosey-goosey. I get to 
um, kind of, you know, just kind of ramble a little bit and have some fun, make it a little more conversational, which I like to do. I know not, I know not everybody loves this style of reading and that's okay. Um, you know, I get that, but you know, we all, <laughs> we all just, we got to work in the way that speaks to us. Right. And, and I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with, um, with uh not having a ton of fans <laughs> because it doesn't it's I like doing this and it feels you know most of the, most days it feels like um some I mean I do I look forward to it you know all day long I film at night so um the end of my night is is doing my readings and I'm like oh yes I get to do my readings <laughs> So, you know, it, when you do that, you, when you film as much as myself or my husband, shout out to Devin Serpent Tara, my husband Paul over there, the best tarot reader ever. Um, but when you do a lot of readings like this, you have to do it from a place of authenticity and you have to just be yourself. Um, we're not trained actors, <laughs> you know. Yes, this is for entertainment, but we're not trained actors. So, um, you know, you, pretty much we are what you, uh, what you get here and, um, and yeah, so I don't know, not that we get a lot of complaints or anything, but I do like to say, you know, um, it's not just an accident that this is how I read. Um, I like to feel connected to you. I like you to know something about myself and about my family and the, and, uh, little TT over here and um it makes it it makes it easier to to connect with spirit so do you have anything to say she says she loves you <laughs> she's purring just for you uh so yes we do love you take care of yourself happy eclipse um, I'd love to hear if anything awesome happens or anything of interest. Uh, maybe you're going to go see it. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, no clouds. Um, it was raining here all day, so I fear that this this weather will be over um, the eastern part of the country. I think that's where the path is, so hopefully not. I'm hoping that you all get to view this thing and, and enjoy it. Um, and, and yeah, just be safe. <laughs> People are going to be acting pretty weird, I think, for the next two or three days. So, um, and that's okay. That's all right. But, you know, be, be aware of your surroundings and all of that. So, all right. I love you. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. Say good night, TT. You want to go to bed? Let's go get in bed.